They say that defense wins NBA championships, but it's not true. Superstars win championships, and the more star power you have, the better. In the last 40 years, only Dirk in 2011 and Hakeem in 1994 won the NBA ring as the lone stars on the team. All the other titles went to the big twos or big threes, who are most likely in the Hall of Fame already, or are a lot to get there once their career is over. Here we are going to discuss the best big threes in NBA history. Bird, Parrish, and McHale Charles Barkley said that Kevin McHale is the toughest opponent he had to play against. Michael Jordan said that if there was one guy to trust with the last second shot, other than him, it would be Larry Bird. Bill Lambeer said that he hates Robert Parrish. Okay, I made that last one up, but it's probably not far from the truth, as all of the Celtics' big three hated Lambeer. When they were not fighting Detroit center, the Celtics were busy being the best team in the NBA, which they were for most of the time. Three-time champs in the 80s, with two more finals appearances, the Celtics were a force to be reckoned with. The front court of Parrish, McHale, and Bird was probably the best of all time, and paired with Dennis Johnson and later Bill Walton, they were one of the most complete teams in history. LeBron, Wade, and Bosh. In the history of the NBA, there have been countless interviews, public statements, and famous quotes. I'm Back by Jordan, Iverson's Practice, and Moses Malone's Faux 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 are certainly some of the most memorable. In the last decade, there is probably no NBA statement more powerful than I'm taking my talents to South Beach. When LeBron said it, he sent shockwaves through the league and the entire sports world. Jerseys have been burned. Insults have been said. Proclamations that LeBron will never win have been published. King James's decisions gave birth to player movement and player empowerment. And even though it was heavily criticized back then, now teaming up with your buddies became the new normal. On the court, the decision proved to be the correct one. The Heat played dominant basketball, with four finals appearances and two titles. If LeBron didn't play badly against the Mavs, it could have been three titles, but in all fairness, those 2011 Mavs swept Kobe and the Lakers and defeated the big three of KD, Russ, and Harden. LeBron, Wade, and Bosh were the most hated big three in the history of the NBA, but they were also one of the best. Three future Hall of Famers in the prime of their career, Braun, Wade, and Bosh played tight switching defense and produced some of the most spectacular lobs the NBA has ever seen. Magic, Kareem, and Worthy. What do you get when you have the best scorer of all time, the best passer of all time, and one of the greatest clutch performers of all time on the same team? You get five championships, that's what. This point guard, small forward, center combo complemented each other's games perfectly. And that's why each player's individual greatness easily translated into team success. Showtime Lakers with Magic, Kareem, and Worthy were the best team in the 80s, with five rings and three more finals appearances. Okay, Worthy came in 1982 after Magic and Kareem already won two titles together, and by the time Big Game James hit his prime, Kareem was coming out of his and was well into his 30s. Still, when all three of them were on the squad, Lakers were extremely tough to beat and were among the most exciting teams of all time. Steph, Clay, and KD. When KD decided that his next chapter would be joining the 73-win Warriors, it really was unfair for the whole league, as Steph, Clay, and Durant formed the most talented offensive three-headed monster ever. This big three played the least amount of time of all the big threes on this list. Still, there are plenty of arguments that this iteration and their supporting cast were the best team that ever played. To elaborate with some numbers and facts, never before in league history have two NBA MVPs played together in their prime. Only nine teams in league history had four All-Stars on the roster, and two of those nine were the Warriors in 2017 and 2018. If we had a super sub in Andre Iguodala, who was an All-Star in the Finals MVP, this team had the most decorated five-man lineup ever, together with the 86 Boston Celtics. In their three years together, the Warriors with KD, Clay, and Steph won 74% of both regular season and playoff games. In 2017, they only lost one game on their way to the Larry O'Brien Trophy, which tied the 2001 Lakers' most dominant postseason run ever. Big Ticket, The Truth, and Jesus. The term Big Three became mainstream when KG and Ray Allen joined forces with Paul Pierce in Boston. Garnett, Pierce, and Allen were perfectly suited to play with each other. Ray was the tireless runner off screens, and when it came to the catch and shoot execution behind the three point line, Jesus Shuttlesworth was the best in the business. 
Paul Pierce was the go-to guy and the only player in the league who would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with LeBron James and Kobe Bryant and trade clutch buckets with them. And then there was KG, one of the most versatile players ever, a defensive fortress with a great postgame and fantastic leadership skills. If they got together sooner, they would have won even more. If Garnett didn't blow up his knee, they might have won in 09. And the same is true for Kendrick Perkins' knee in 2010. Only one title and one other finals appearance don't do their talent justice, but they were definitely a dynasty for a while and have proved that anything is possible. Timmy, Manu, and Tony. Another big three that everybody knows on the first name basis. With 575 regular season and 126 postseason wins together, Duncan, Ginobili, and Parker are the winningest trio that ever played NBA basketball. With none of the players born on U.S. soil, this big three was a part of the most successful team in American sports during their playing time. After Timmy debuted in the black and silver jersey, the Spurs went to six finals, won five titles, and did not notch one season below the 600 winning percentage. Duncan retired as the best power forward who ever played. Tony is regarded as the best European point guard ever, and Manu is a genius who won gold at every level and is arguably the best sixth man of all time. If you look at their stats, they are worse than any other big three on this list. But this was a caveat for playing in San Antonio. The Spurs were the first believers in load management and have been cutting players' minutes even if they weren't in their 30s yet. Also, the Spurs' way of playing was team-oriented basketball that puts the team benefit before the individual numbers. So on paper, they don't seem as dominant as some other big threes. On the court, they prove to be one of the best. Michael, Scotty, and Dennis. Dennis didn't do too much on the court. He was a non-threat with the ball in his hands, didn't score that often, and averaged less than two assists in his career. Dennis rarely ever spoke to Michael and Scotty. He lived a lifestyle that was quite unprofessional. Still, when it came to physical fitness, being tough, bothering everybody with his defense, and rebounding, nobody was as professional as he was. Because he didn't need the ball to be effective, Rodman was the perfect complement to the great duo already in place in Chicago. The all-around maestro Scottie Pippen and Jordan, the killer scorer. As a unit, Jordan, Pippen, and Rodman were perfect. Michael and Scotty would score and assist, and Rodman would rebound. And all three played stifling defense. Neither was a great outside shooter, but they played in the era where a whole team would shoot 10 threes per game, so it wasn't that important. When Jordan first returned in 95, he wasn't in the best basketball shape, but it wasn't the main reason they lost to Shaq's Orlando. No, Jordan was still extremely good, but the Bulls lost because they were weak up front and got out-rebounded every game. When they added the best rebounder ever, they went 72-10 the next year. And three years after Jordan suffered his only playoff loss in the 90s, they were three-peating, and the Bulls won their sixth in eight years. At the time, they were the best big three in the league, and they still are one of the best of all time. 